And there is Stefan Johnson, who has made his way to the ring, just turned 21 years of age two weeks ago out of Brooklyn, New York, from the projects in the uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant section. Last fight, April the 27th in Washington, he outpointed Anthony Ross. And that a fight that saw Johnson have difficulty making the weight. I don't know about that uh, four-rounder with Spike Lee, Ferdy. I'm well, not uh, not certain about that one. He might be able to outpunch Spike, but he can't outact him. Spike's got that acting down pat. I wouldn't challenge Spike Lee on acting. On the subject of acting, here is the flamboyant Roy Jones, who is making his way from the dressing room. Man who won the silver in the 156-pound light middleweight class at the Olympic Games last October. And his moves were reminiscent of a man that he admires, Sugar Ray Leonard. Very fast hands. At times, uh, keeps the hands low, but his style is on the fluid side. Roy Jones from a family of five, a, a two-time National Golden Gloves champion. He began boxing in his backyard as a 10-year-old, coached by his dad. As we detailed a moment ago, Roy Jones Sr., one-time professional boxer who faced Marvin Hagler uh, back in 1977 and lost to the marvelous one, about stopped in the third round because of cuts. And the crowd of about 2,000 responding to the entrance of Roy Jones to the uh, strings of the Roy Jones rap. Uh, he was coming down that aisle looking very lackadaisical until that music started and he heard the audience and he started dancing a little bit and he says he feels good when he dances. If he feels that he's going to do it, he didn't care what the public says about it. And of course, the hat is going to be a trademark, he says, all the way to the title. Should be pointed out, this is the second Roy Jones rap song. He did not like the first one because he could not properly dance to it. So this is now the official Roy Jones rap. You picture a day at Gleason's gym where they have an upright piano and guys will come in rehearsing. I got a song for you. Roy Jones and Stefan Johnson closing in on fight time. We'll be back in a moment. Barry Killer Hyman. The champ battles a parts manager from Patterson. A sports fantasy today. Back in Atlantic City, New Jersey, a uh, look at the tail of the tape. And Roy Jones with the three-inch reach advantage, a slight advantage in weight. And how about the Fight Doctor RX, uh, first from the Roy Jones point of view? From Roy Jones, he's got to forget about impressing the public with his flashy amateur style. Get down, show patience, and fight his fight, which means a jab, a body attack, before he goes out for that early knockout that he thinks he's going to get. And how about Stefan Johnson? He's got to use his patience and experience to withstand those early onslaught of Jones because when it gets past round three, he is into a new territory, the pro ranks of professional fighting. That's when Johnson will come into his own. All right, and the scoring is uh, handled by three judges on a 10-point must system. The referee does not score the bout. The referee is uh, Randy Newman. Three knockdown rule is in effect. There is a standing eight by discretion of the uh, referee. And the three judges, Henry Grant, John Riley, James Condon, all from the state of New Jersey. Now set for the ring introductions. Let's go to Jim Marotta. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is set for eight rounds in the junior middleweight division. Referee Randy Newman. Introducing first in the blue corner to my left, he hails from Brooklyn, New York. He weighs in at 152 and one half pounds, wearing black trunks, a professional record of nine and two, five big knockouts. Please welcome Stefan Johnson. Johnson. His opponent in the red corner from Pensacola, Florida. He is wearing white trunks with a multicolored trim, weighs in had 155 pounds even, the 1988 Olympic silver medalist in the light middleweight division, voted the most outstanding boxer 
in the 1988 Olympics, undefeated as a pro. Please welcome Roy Jones, Jr. Jones! Referee Randy Newman. And Roy Jones, accompanied to the center of the ring by his dad, Roy Jones, Sr. Number one defending self at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the belt. Junior middleweight uh, champions in the IBF division. Darren Van Horn, WBC champ out of France, Rene Chaco, and the WBA title holder is Julian Jackson from the uh, Virgin Islands. Roy Jones has a uh, stepped up itinerary. He feels he wants to be fighting for a title by his eighth pro bout. That's uh, overly ambitious, I think. I think you should really learn because even if you accomplish it, then you step into trouble. You haven't learned your craft and you're in against real champions. It did not work very well for Leon Spinks. did not work very well for Davey Moore. And I don't think it works very well for anyone. Step on Johnson and only his 12th professional bout. He has improved his uh, defensive uh, boxing. He's been showing more side-to-side -side and head movement in recent fights and has been keeping the uh, the lead hand up in his earlier fights. He was dropping it, continually getting nailed by uh, big right hands as both Jones and Johnson open out in a uh, feeling out process here in round one. This is exactly what Johnson said he wanted to do. He just wants to box and willing to just about give away the first three rounds just to see what happens after that. But Jones now right on target as he uh, chases Johnson. What Jones has, as we saw through all of the Olympic uh, events, is an extremely uh, fast reflexes. He just has a sense of where uh, to throw punches. And even though his distance is not proper right now, he still lands some punches that shouldn't land by all rights. I don't think you can look for Stephen Johnson to do anything dramatic the first round or two because he just wants to get this guy settled down. Let him get a little adrenaline pumping and get tired a little bit. Just past the halfway mark of this first round scheduled for eight. What about an eight round fight? Second time out of the box for Roy Jones. Another mistake I feel unless you knock the guy out. That's a long way to go. The second time... Uh, that you step in a professional ring, especially against a guy who is learning his craft every day, sparring with a, a wonderful champion like uh, Simon Brown. I mean, Simon can teach you a few things. You box with him every day. Yes, Stefan Johnson turned pro back in July of 87. And over the past year, he has been sparring with the IBF welterweight champion, Simon Brown. So far, the good part, as far as Jones is concerned, is uh, he's landing more punches, and, uh, as few as are thrown. But the main thing is he is not excited and going crazy. We saw his opening debut in uh, Pensacola, and it looked like the uh, beginning of the fourth round from the Olympics. He was very wild. And we are final seconds, first round. <laughs> So we finish with the flurry. We'll be back in a moment. Right. You know what you got to do. Here you go, Fair. In the back of here. Roy Jones was just uh, told by his dad, go, don't go. fight right, for the, the crowd. You're the best. You know what to do, but don't try to impress uh, the crowd. See, people listen to this fight, Dr. Zarex. <laughs> <laughs> They read this stuff. I saw them uh, hunched around the monitor right before the, uh, the start of the bout. This is round two. Stefan Johnson in the black trunks and Roy Jones in the white. And if you followed what I was saying right at the end of that round, just as I was saying that he didn't go crazy, he went crazy at the very last 10 or 15 seconds, but that was all right. It was at the end of the round where he doesn't have a chance to get tired, and he picks up the round. He won the round handily, I thought. So it's... Uh, Stefan doing what he wants and uh, Jones picking up that first round. One of the things that has to be commented on is the difference in body size here. Looking at uh, uh, Jones, he looks like a full middleweight. I mean, absolutely full middleweight. The other guy looks like a blown up welterweight. He is not that big. And this 
this is listed as a junior middleweight bout. First part of our NBC boxing doubleheader coming up later on Sports World. Vinny Pazienza, the one-time IBF lightweight champion, going against South Philly's Vinny Bergesi, along with Sports Fantasy with Len Berman. That'll be Sports World following ringside. Jones tuning up with his hard jab. Throwing hooks off that jab. Nice right hand lead. Good combination by Jones. All, the all, other good thing about Jones is when he throws a punch, he means that those jabs are hard. The right cross right hand lead just then was hard. There it is again. And again. Oh, they just hit heads very hard. No resulting cut, however. Little bit of apprehension on the face of Stefan Johnson. Now he's felt the sting and he knows that he's in with a guy that can bang. And we approach the one minute mark, minute to go. In this second round, it is scheduled for eight. Roy Jones in his second professional bout. Coming off his performance in the Olympic Games, Stefan Johnson at nine and two, five by knockout. Right off the bat, Jones off these first two rounds is looking extremely better than he did in his first fight in Pensacola, where he looked like he was just taking up where he left off in the amateurs. Here, he's beginning to look like a pro. He's uh, he is punching like a pro. He's keeping his head after he punches. And again, Jones landing this time with the left hook. Jones stepping up the action here in the second round. We'll be back after these messages. Roy Jones last flurry before the bell. Look at that right hand and then a left hook afterwards. That's the kind of stuff that knocks people out. And this is round three. Roy Jones in the white, Stefan Johnson in the black trunks. One of the one of the problems that Johnson has had during the course of his career, conditioning. He has run out of gas, in particular at the end of the round. He usually looks better earlier in fights than later. And from time to time, and looking at uh, some of the tapes, we notice that uh, Johnson's mouth has been wide open from the uh, third round on. So stamina. Uh, maybe a factor if uh, Johnson gets to that point. Well, his stamina is going to be put to the test because he's eating just about a lot of leather. About everything that uh, Roy Jones is throwing is landing, and he, some of it very hard and right on the button. So he's going to be wearing out Stefan Johnson, whose plan it was to start fighting after the third round, and uh, the way it's going, it's a bad plan. Look at the... The difference in terms of experience. Jones, 110 amateur fights in an illustrious uh, amateur career. Johnson, only 12 amateur bouts. Well, I think that uh, statistic is being reflected in the ring right now. He's being outclassed, outsped, outfought, outfought by Roy Jones. If indeed, Stefan... Johnson's strategy is to start fighting after the third round. He's made a mistake in strategy because he's getting eaten up right here. They have noticed Stefan Johnson wearing the Star of David on his trunks. He's a member of the black and Hispanic uh, Brooklyn group known as the uh, Hebrew Israelites. So he wears the, the Star of David on the uh, right side of the trunk. I say the left side of the trunk. It's not helping him too much here, however. <laughs> That right hand is just taking the fight right out of Stefan Johnson. The right hand by Roy Jones, which is landing with such accuracy. He's throwing it almost like a jab. There it is again. He just has disregard totally for any offense Stefan Johnson might have in mind. Oh, well, Pappy Galt said to me right before we started, I'm looking for a fourth round knockout. I don't see this going the distance. And Pappy has trained him for eight rounds, but I don't think he's going to use up all eight rounds. And we're coming up on uh, 15 seconds left 
in round three. And as they say in the in the amateur ranks, Roy Jones is painting Stefan Johnson. Another overwhelming round for Roy Jones. Distance. Say what now? You're slipping shots, but you're giving him the distance. He's breathing like crazy. You slip shots and oh. stay close to him. Oh, keep your hands up. Listen, he's he's slowing down. Yeah, you know. I want you to come around. Come around. Go now. Go around. Come 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 and I would assume the uh, Fight Doctor scorecard has it all Roy Jones. It's a t total shutout, 30 to 27. Uh, it's funny, in the, in the corner they were trying to animate their fight. I said, well, it's the fourth round now, so pick it up now, and because he's slowing down. He's getting tired, he's slowing down. <laughs> and uh, Johnson was also told that his punches, in fact, were slowing down. Well. He's fighting more starting this fourth round than he had before. Before, he's just purely catching. Now he's throwing something. At least he's starting an offensive of his own. Johnson reaching and then got caught by Jones. Jones has great, great reflexes. I mean, that, that's, when you get close to him, punches rain on you from every angle. But he's got an awful lot to learn as a pro, but this is only a second fight, so hard to make any determination. Halfway through, round four, it is scheduled for eight. 20-year-old Roy Jones out of Pensacola, Florida. Continues to land combinations on the 21-year-old Stephon Johnson, a native of Brooklyn. So far, the corner has not told Johnson how to avoid that right hand. That's what they should be working on. Tell him to keep that glove up to this guy's hitting you with every right hand he throws. Right hand leads should not land with regularity. Again, Jones able to rock uh, Johnson. Johnson can take a punch. That right hand should have put him down. It drove him all the way across the ring into the ropes, but he's made his recovery. He's back fighting. Johnson doesn't have any steam on his punches. And Jones just appears to be getting stronger. Stephon Johnson continues to uh, keep away from Roy Jones. A lot of room between between the two. Final seconds, round four. This is what happens with that wide open style that you're throwing punches from every angle. Now watch Jones get caught right there. That's what happens when you don't care about defense. You just got offense going for you. If he's going to be a finished pro, he's going to have to come in with a little bit better defense. Right now, he doesn't need to because Stefan Johnson is not presenting a big threat. And this is round five with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, Marv Albert. We are located in the ballroom of the Atlantic City Convention Center. First part of our NBC boxing doubleheader later on. It will be Vinny Pazienza going against Vinny Bergesi. Stefan Johnson in the black trunks continues to stay outside, away from Roy Jones. Uh, in that way, he thinks he's uh, uh, avoiding punishment. Actually, he's getting caught with that right hand far out. He probably would be doing better to step inside and try to rough him up, try to get him out of his game plan, fight with him instead of trying to box him. He's losing the boxing. seen so far. 
Roy Jones is, Jones is living, living up to his promise. What you're looking at is an extremely good prospect for a boxer puncher. A guy that can box, but at the same time can turn loose those punches and knock you out. Right now, what you're looking at is the kind of thing that makes you drool when you see it in, the, in a gymnasium for a young kid. Roy Jones was the youngest member of the United States Olympic boxing team, only 19 years of age when he fought in Seoul. He was awarded the Val Barker Cup, outstanding boxer of the games. It seemed like an acknowledgement of guilt by the international boxing officials. They've done just about everything other than better. Oh, good right hand. Stefan must have a hard chin. He took that one and he's back up there for more target practice. Stefan Johnson has never been down. And that is both uh, as an amateur, though he had a brief uh, amateur career, and uh, in the professional ranks. Well, he's certainly taken enough hard shots to go down here. And in the meantime, we'll never know how Jones takes a punch off of this because he has not gotten hit with any really effective punches yet. That will wrap it for the fifth round, scheduled for eight. All right, okay, I get that. Oh, that's that's, that's what you got, man, blue. Look, I got it. No, that's no, that's no. Yeah. That's my piece of Yeah, I got it ready. Uh, Come on, Dad, let's go, son. This is your day. That's number to go, go, go. And that is Roy Jones Sr. coming out of the corner of his son, Roy Jones, uh, well in front, having no difficulty at all with uh, Stefan Johnson. Roy Jones, uh, not one who's considered to be a knockout puncher, more of a, as you mentioned earlier, combination uh, puncher. And, uh, we'll get the knockouts in time due to a accumulation of blows. Yeah, I, I think what we're seeing... Uh, here, here comes Stephen Johnson. Now, this is his attack. <laughs> he has been waiting for these later rounds. Now comes the uh, shootout, as promised by Stephen Johnson. He said, I'll lay it all out in those last three rounds. Yes, Johnson stepping it up. Coming out to get involved here in the sixth round and to jones credit he's not stepping back he's stepping in saying you want to have it out let's go there's a lot of fighter in uh, roy jones a lot of heart we saw it in the olympics we're seeing it here he just doesn't go back he just decides let's stand and have it and suddenly stefan johnson moving inside he had stayed away throughout the bout and for very good reason he's getting powdered outside at least inside, he's got some chance to land his own stuff. Now he's going back outside. I guess he didn't like it inside. <laughs> One of the knocks will be, since this is only a second fight, he has just not gone to the body. He's just not... Uh, He's a learning fighter, that's why I'm so so against the guy going for the title that early. Let him learn how to go to the body. Let him learn how to do his work. If he had been punching to the body with the same authority that's been punching to the head, by now Stefan would be ready to go. Under a minute left, and the sixth round. Roy Jones people have to be surprised that it has gone this far. Perfect right hand right off the chin of Stephen Johnson. Still there he sits. He's getting worn out, but he sure is taking these punches well. Stephen Johnson just took a big gulp of air. And a little is not going to endear him to the public. Well, 
particularly in this in this type of situation where although he's been in command, still Stephon Johnson has been able to hang on. And this is round seven. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Freddie Pacheco, Roy Jones in the white trunks, Stephon Johnson. And the black for the first time in the last round, uh, Johnson went to the attack, although briefly. Yeah, he went in for about a minute inside and was doing fairly well, although he was getting clipped a lot. And then all of a sudden got tired, backed out, and went back to a perimeter fighting, which was a sort of a slow motion uh, of the inside. He was still getting hurt. And if there was anything remarkable is that uh, Jones began his dancing and hot dogging, which I don't agree with. And obviously did not get the, uh, the same response as he would in his hometown of, of Pensacola, but I think the hot dogging is all a matter of, of timing. A Ray Leonard can look good going into Muhammad Ali. Nice glory by Jones, and this time the, the crowd does respond. Absolutely true. You, you have to prove who you are before you can do it. Ali could do it because he proved he was the greatest. And so could Leonard. Leonard was the greatest fighting at the time, and he proved it. It's sort of timing. I mean, it's uh, an excitement that goes on in a fighter's mind, and he's happy, and he's doing everything he wants to, and he, he does what he wants to do. Right now, in this round, punching has gotten very, very hard. Jones has gone to the body a lot more, including the old shoe shine from the Olympics, which is a series of... Uh, Punches to the body. Johnson holding his own this round, although woefully tired now. He has been getting punched very hard, and now more than any other time in this bout, Jones is going to the body. <laughs> Jones just said, "Are you okay?" The guy, the guy wiped his hand, wiped his uh, his brow and breathed in and Roy Jones said, are you okay? <laughs> Solicitousness is part of his nature. And we're under a minute left in the seventh round. We mentioned earlier that stamina might be a question with Stefan Johnson, but to this point we have not seen any signs of that being a problem. Well, the problem we were looking for was can Jones keep up this pro pace for eight rounds? The answer is yes, he can. And the problem really comes down, who to match this guy with? Because the next one's a 10-rounder. This type of fighter is no longer in his category. Now he has to go up higher, and he may get too soon, too fast into real good competition. <laughs> So that is the end of the seventh round, and we'll stay right here. The eighth and final round is coming up. Come on, get the control out now. Come on, come on, get up, get up. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Mm -hmm. Watch him. Mm -hmm. My punch is, I don't know. Yeah, it's too much weight for you, baby. Maybe too much weight, too much weight for you, that's what it is. It's strong. Gotta go back to 46. Oh, here, you're nothing. I'm still here, no problem. Oh, you want to be here at the end, but I want to. And we need to stay close to his chest. You're giving him the punching distance. Yeah. If you stay close, and then we have hands up, and we can't touch him. You can the last round for me. He's making him do it. Last round, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Last round. Put your arms down. I want your arms down. Take a deep breath. Come on, that's it. The last round. Out of the corner of Roy Jones. Go out. I mean, I'm going to go out. Very candid analysis hey, Liam. Hey, Liam. by Stefan Johnson's uh, cornerman saying hey, too much hey, weight you. for you. They're planning ahead. They say, let's go back to 147. The guy said, wait a minute, I got one more round. <laughs> I got to do one more round here. Can I resign? Is there some way out of here? And they got it just right. It is too much weight for him. Also too much speed. Also too much class. Also a much better boxer. What does the uh, fight doctor uh, scorecard tell us? Through seventh. Yeah, it's all the way across, 70 to 63, and the only uh, problem has been multiplying nine times rounds. Oh, a little fierce fighting on the inside by Stephen, trying to come in. Good body shot by Jones.
continues to headhunt in this opening minute of the eighth and final round. First part of our NBC boxing doubleheader. Later on on Sports World, Vinny Pazienza. Vinny Pazienza. Good up and cut by Joel. That stunned Johnson, but still remains on his feet. But by a shade, a little bit, one punch to follow that one, and he was gone. An uppercut snapped him, and he is in trouble. has never been down. Looking very shaky, though. Halfway through the final round. Jones is going for this knockout. Stephen Johnson extremely shaky. There goes that uppercut again. Jones also guiding the right hand by a uh, holding with the left, which is illegal. The referee looking at this very, very sharply, almost as if to say a couple more of those, and I'm stopping this. That's it. He does. Yes, it is all over. Randy Newman stopping the bout in the final minute of the eighth and final round. So Roy Jones, in his second professional bout, comes up with the technical knockout of Stefan Johnson. Well, although it was a clear cut, overwhelming performance by Jones, there will be those out there who will say, well, why can't he knock out an opponent like Stefan Johnson earlier? What's What's your answer? Well, he's, this is a second professional fight. He's finding his way. This is school. He he is in grammar school here. He has not exactly, uh, this is not the finish. Now here, this is the uppercut as you're seeing that just right there the fight was over with. And of course, by the end of this, there was no reason for this to continue. He was, Stephen Johnson was getting hit so hard, it could cause damage. The referee very wisely, Randy Newman stepped in and stopped the fight. I agree with it. I thought it was properly stopped. So it is Roy Jones stopping Stefan Johnson. And the final minute of round eight. We'll be back to talk with Roy Jones in a moment. We are back in Atlantic City, New Jersey for the official announcement. Let's go to the ring for Jim Murata. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a big hand for both fighters. Here is your time. Two minutes, four seconds of the eighth round. Referee Randy Newman halts it. Winner by technical knockout. Still undefeated as a professional, Roy Jones Jr. So the official time, 204 of round eight for Roy Jones in his second pro fight. Man who won the silver in the light middleweight class at the Seoul Olympics last October, losing the gold in that uh, controversial decision. Let's go to the fight, Doctor. You're satisfied with going the eighth um, that well? Uh, yeah, I'm definitely satisfied. But uh, I knew all the time I could do it. It was just, excuse me, it doesn't matter getting uh, up here and getting with it. Did you uh, get tired after three? Well, not really tired. I just got down to where you needed to get when I was able to get to where I could get my second win. Then I started going. Did you learn anything from this uh, second professional fight? Oh, I learned a lot, but uh, I better not go through it right now because if I keep telling people what I'm learning <laughs> and they instead of picking up what I'm learning, they're learning it too. So I better not go through it, but I learned a lot. I, I think your superior reflex will neutralize what everybody else is going to learn. Yeah. How about 10-rounders? You think you're ready for the 10-round uh, coming up? I can go 10, 12. It don't make me a difference. I can go anything, I believe. Uh, one last thing about your, um, you were punching beautifully to the head, but you seemed to eliminate the beautiful body attack that we saw in the Olympics. What happened to the body attack? Well, Stefan had very good defense against the body shots, and uh, uh, I learned one thing I can tell you I learned is that a lot of guys in, pro in professional, I've been sparring with uh, Lindell Holmes, who's ranked number one now, in super middleweight, and uh, he teaches me a lot. And a lot of the professional guys tend to want you to go down and go for the body so they can get a good head shot. Yeah. I'm not going to give away a good head shot early. All right. Later All on, right. I started working the body, but uh, my dad told me to start working. I had to wait till I get to right. where I thought I could get away dad with it. Dad is standing right here. Is there anything you didn't like? I know what you liked. What didn't you like? Well, I was well, I was well pleased with his performance. And uh, there's some things that we need to work on, little minor things. You know, they're not nothing really major. 
But uh, the most important thing is I intend to keep him ready, you know, no matter what, you know. Now, he say 10 rounds right now, but, you know, he's young, and I never tell him what he can't do, you <laughs> okay. know. But I, I'm still going to, we're just going to play it by ear, you know. All right. Fight, fight, fight. Thank you very much. Back to Marv Albert at ringside.